Princess Monica? Ugh. Cody. Ugh. Lord Banks? Hey! Anyone? Oh. Mm. Uh, what? What happened? The grenades did the trick, I think. Oh my god! I don't hear any of those monster demon things, so I think we're safe. Uh, maybe. Maybe not. Why? What are you thinking? <sighs> my baby girl! Monica! Monica, baby, wake up! Ow! Oh, that was more kick than I remembered. What's that part of the bunker caved in? Shh. Hear anything. Exactly. There are no demons out there. JJ, where's Cody? Oh my god, he's here somewhere. Cody? Cody, baby! Oh, thank god you're okay, baby. Here, let me sit you up straight. I'm just not being trapped between demons and dead ends. Trapped? No! I think we can get out of here. Lord Banks, look! Can you bring the lamp a little closer? What is that? Whoever built this bunker had enough sense to build an oxygen sensor. Well, what does it say? <gasps> oh no. At this rate? It says we have about two hours of oxygen left in this bunker. New Kingdom Radio Theater. New Kingdom Radio Theater presents The Beggar. The first film by the writer-director of The Rise of King Asylus, J.V. Torres. Get a glimpse of King Asylus' America in this thrilling short flick. Now making its rounds through the film festival circuit, the only place to watch this movie is on our Patreon. Go to patreon.com forward slash King Asylus and sign up for as little as $1. Critics say the beggar is outstanding. First time director J.V. Torres is way ahead of the curve, say indie filmmakers. If you listen to King Asylus, you have to see the beggar. Go to patreon.com forward slash King Asylus or click the link in the show notes and watch this thrilling flick today. At the Grand Castle, Lord Shelley regained her strength and got back on her feet in record time. The king was glowing with joy and behaved like a schoolboy in love. He doted on Shelley in private and held her by the arm publicly. He wanted everyone to see they were joined together. That very day, Shelley stepped off her hospital bed. King Asylus walked with her and announced to everyone at the Grand Castle that very soon there would be a wedding. He and Lord Shelley would exchange vows and usher in a new era for the kingdom. Lords Orrit and Hemingway were there as the king made his announcement. They were both elated and also deeply disheartened. For they, and everyone else knew something was terribly wrong. The signs were clear. There most certainly would be a new age being ushered in. But nobody wanted to admit to themselves it would not be good for anyone within the castle walls. Or anywhere else.
My lords and countrymen, I am overjoyed to be among you all. I see faces steeped in vast hope in your eyes. I recognize the gloss of wonder, which is the filament of hope for this kingdom and all of mankind. We must keep in mind everyone has been deceived by a god that makes all the rules and then breaks them at a whim. Everyone has been brought into existence as part of some spiritual stratagem that only the creator understands. Everyone is doomed to fail in this game and thus we are all pawns on a global chessboard. So now is the time we show the creator our true worthiness and our might by bringing down the Son of Man. We will crucify him again and demonstrate once and for all our true might. And with Lord Shelley by my side, we all now have a greater advantage to crush what lays ahead. <clears throat> My lords, all of you know me here, and though some time has passed, I am absolutely certain of my role in this upcoming battle. I assure you all that I will give my very best and will not fail my king, nor my countrymen, nor humankind. Rest assured, Winning this upcoming war will be an immense challenge, but our strength and our resolve are our most potent weapons. Believe in this. Oh my God, Gabriel. Look, that wicked woman is still alive. I can't say I'm completely shocked. We never got confirmation she was even on that plane. Yeah, she was on that plane. Just look at her. She looks all beat up. Probably got stitches and whatnot. But I assure you, it is the best way we can achieve our goals. Right now, we are severely undermanned, and keeping our forces together will be very challenging. But with the underworld forces, we will increase our fortitude 20 fold. It's that simple. We cannot win the war without them. But they are demons. You can't trust demons. I can understand your concerns with this. I have been given assurances that demons will not act upon the great men and women of our military. They will fight alongside us. You can't trust the devil, my king. This is a terrible mistake. Gideon, bring that man to me now. King, I am merely expressing a concern. I meant no offense. Just hear me out. I cannot have such dissidence of any sort, man. Discord of this nature is poison, and I will not allow it among my ranks. You have no right to speak more about this matter. I command this. Uh, my lady, Lord Sheriff, please, I beg of you to speak on my behalf. I will do no such thing. My countrymen, see what is happening here. This is evil. I am one of you. I speak my mind only in reverence of my country and my king. I should not be put to death over words. For the love of God, open your eyes to what is happening here. Do you realize we are headed towards the apocalypse? We cannot align ourselves with the devil or his demons. It's the worst idea ever in the history of Earth. Please, everyone wake up. It's not too late. You have spoken out against your king, my man. And for that, there is no defense, nor forgiveness. I think we better get out of her eyes. This place has gone completely mad. I would use different words to describe what this place has become. Please, get us out of here.
Where is Lord Banks? She's been gone for a bit, and she should have been here tonight for this occasion. There's no excuse for her absence. With all due respect, sir, we've been away for a bit of time and haven't had much contact with anyone until we got back. I believe I asked for the whereabouts of Lord Banks, not lame excuses. Now we'll ask again, and you better have an answer for me. Where is Lord Banks? Sir, I have reviewed the latest intel reports, and I did find something regarding Lord Banks as recent as two weeks ago. I'm listening. Well, she accessed the gold depository in South Carolina. I checked on the inventory, and a substantial amount of gold is unaccounted for. She robbed me, and then she took off. I would never have pegged her for a thief. Sir, if I may, Lord Banks was distraught these past few months over her daughter, your grandson's disappearance, and it's my opinion she used the gold for something, perhaps to barter for the princess, and maybe even your grandson. My grandson? No. But barter for the princess, maybe. Who had that wretched brat anyway? We believe she was kidnapped by an unknown underground network, probably Malcolm Banks and his Drax affiliates. But I don't think Banks would trade her for gold. They have no need for it. She was probably snatched from Banks' group and brought back to the original states. It's just a theory. Stop. But... I get it. So Lord Banks used the gold to get her daughter back. But did she know anything about my grandson? That much is anyone's guess. But if Banks is even still alive with the princess, they are likely in serious danger. She is a lord of the High Council, and likely no one is protecting her. Yeah, but she's resourceful. She knows where we keep all the gold. She also knows where all the emergency bunkers are. She'll probably hide out and wait for the smoke to settle before peering her wrinkled, hideous face out again. Sir, should we send special forces to locate her? We have a way to locate her using her transponder signal. It's not the most accurate location method, but we can get close enough. And if she's in a bunker, we'll be able to figure out which one she's in. Fine, do it. I want her back here as soon as possible. She will have to face judgment for her treason. Living in a bubble.
Trapped in a bunker, Lord Banks and the others tried desperately to dig themselves out. To the amazement of the women, Cody stood up and began helping them dig. JJ took a step back and watched with her mouth wide open in utter shock. The four continued digging, but quickly realized they were breathing harder. And the harder they breathed, the more oxygen they were depleting from the bunker. It was a desperate situation. They ultimately decided to take turns breathing, and while one was digging, the other three would hold their breath as long as they could to preserve the oxygen in their bunker. The situation seemed hopeless. Time was running out. And to make matters worse, they could hear loud muffled screams on the other side of the wall of rope. Back on Exile Island, Jacob and the others began to make a new, even bolder plan than the one before. The clock was ticking for everyone left on the planet. And the fate of the world and all its inhabitants would soon be realized by all of the living and the dead. chance to thank you for that remedy, Jacob. As nasty as it was, it made me feel like a new man. You have to share that recipe with me one of these days. Sure, but let's get through these next few missions first, okay? Ah, uh, yes, the gloom and doom, end of the world. You know, I'm gonna laugh and this all turns out to be another big nothing burger. I actually hope you are right. I would love nothing more than to be proven wrong. Okay, can we please get back to business here? Look, now we know Shelly survived our plane bomb. But we also know her and Dad are getting married soon. Probably very soon. So we don't have a lot of time here. Great. What's your next grand plan? We have to get back to New Eden. Again? You and Gabriel were just there and came running back with your tails between your legs. No. We need to go back and hide out someplace close to the castle. That way we can keep a close eye on what's going on and make our move. I know a place we can hide out. You do? That's fantastic! Where? There's a house. Pretty close to the castle that dead girls would sometimes use. What, what, what did you use it for? Isaac! Where are your manners? Go on, Brittany. Well, this house is like a secret house. It has a tunnel that leads to the castle or at least inside the gates of the castle. I know of all the tunnels leading in and out of the castle. Most of them were filled in with concrete after Lord Capone began sneaking women in and out through all of them. I'm pretty sure this tunnel was not filled in completely. Can I ask who made the tunnel? It's complicated. The king ordered the original tunnel, but when he ordered it to be sealed, he only sealed the end. We basically dug around the seals. So there really is a secret way in? Uh-huh. Get me to the main square, and I'll show you where the house is. Hey, it's better than sleeping in the bushes and being bitten by mosquitoes every night. Believe me, it didn't look like this the last time I was here. My god! 
It looks like all the Spartans are on the ground along with demons. Something big is about to happen. Probably pretty soon, too. Look, Chinooks. There's like six of them. I wonder why Dad has so many of those things landing near the castle. I should go right into the castle, walk right up to Shelly, and shoot her and Dad. Don't be stupid, Isaac. Father likely has a kill on sight order on you. It's best you don't expose yourself unnecessarily. Just uh, hold your thoughts. I have a much better plan. to The Rise of King of Silas, Episode 73, Filament of Hope, starring J.V. Torres as King of Silas, Amanda Haggist as J.J., Madeline Goshorn as Lord Banks, Mike McDonald as Prince Isaac, Shane Maester as Lord Anna Patricia Shelley, Dominic Notaro as Prince Jacob, Adam Higgins as Lord Peter Hemingway, Steve Fisher as Lord Jeremy Oreb, Alex Olson as Gabriel, Jacqueline Noel as Brittany, Skylar Torres as Man in the Crowd, and narrated by Sergei Brezhnikov. This episode features the song Bubble by The Upstarters. Download the music of The Upstarters on Bandcamp.com today. For more information about the cast, the music, or this production, please visit us at www.theriseofkingasilas.com for a full list on our Season 5 episode page. And now, a word from our podcast friends. Hello, I'm Lindsay Morse, the host of Fab Figmentals a podcast that blends history and storytelling to explore the realm of curious creatures, magical monsters, and beautiful beasts. Each week on the show, I'll introduce you to a new legendary creature, and together we'll explore its mythology and lore. Every episode of Fab Figmentals begins with a story, and then we dive into the history behind the myth. The show features stories from folklore, classic fairy tales, and our own original vignettes, And the stories will often be more Brothers Grimm than Mother Goose. Think whimsy with a bit of an edge. New episodes are released every Wednesday, and you'll find the show wherever you get your podcasts. Join me as we set out on an extraordinary exploration into the most fascinating corners of myth. This has been a production of the New Kingdom Radio Theater in Baltimore, Maryland. Copyright 2022. And stay tuned for episode 74. <laughs>